Okay, to finish off this little series, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to UV unwrap and then bake out the normal maps for the small hippo on the retopologized version from the high res sculpt. So if I just reset the location here, what I want to do is I'm first just going to go into local view by hitting numpad slash. And then let's hit tab to go into edit mode and we're promptly going to remove the hippo concept from our image view. And actually we need to leave edit mode real quick and just apply our mirror modifier. This way that we can go ahead and unwrap it. And next thing is let's just go ahead and first start setting our seams. So for the seams, uh, I wanna try and keep this as you know a single mesh or a single unwrap as possible. But a few of the seams I'm gonna go ahead and promptly add are right around the jawline. So I might select this loop, I'll hit control E uh, mark the seam and I don't necessarily know exactly where these are going to go or which ones are going to work but these are just what I'm initially assuming will work so I want to also go ahead and set one along the uh, bottom side all the way along so I'll just select those two vertices and I'll hit uh, W and select vertex path rather than doing an, a loop select and then having to deselect all the top side so then I'll hit control E mark the seam Let's also set a seam right around the base of the tail, something like this. And again, these are just, I'm merely placing these based on experience and what I think is going to work. Go oh, and set a seam around the inside of the, the legs as well, maybe something like this along the insides of both. Uh, not there, I'll go and set, say there, and then I want to deselect all of these. And I'll deselect all of these. I'll mark those seams. And then I also want to let the feet or the bottoms of the feet kind of unfold. And so if this is, you know, this section here is going to split off in that direction, this one will split off in that direction. And so this then should probably just flip up. And so I will set the seam. I'll just alt right click, select this loop and select this loop. And actually, that will probably work just fine. Or actually, you know, I'll go and set it something like this. And then I'll do this on all of them. Okay, Control E, mark those seams. And let's just see what we have so far. So if I select everything, hit U and unwrap, we can start to see actually we've got a pretty nice pelt map already. But before we go any further, let's go ahead and add in a UV test grid. And I'm going to go and set this at 2048 by 2048 because then I'll then actually use this as my baking base. And I like to bake larger than maybe I would necessarily need, depending on what I'm doing. But 2048 is a good starting point, I think. And I also want to hit T or excuse me, N in the UV view and just set this to be UV grid. So that then if we go over here in the properties panel, I can set the display type to be, oh, if I switch away from the cycles render, just a blender render, then I can set this as textured solid. Um, no, why didn't that work? Oh, for some reason it didn't assign the image, so I'll just select this. And it's because, I, oh, actually it's because I switched from blender render. So I'll set that and then enable textured solid and this will then work. So what I need to do now is we can examine where we have stretching so we can see Okay, apologies for the small interruption there. Uh, AC kicked on just again, but we just want to review the areas on the feet in particular where we have a lot of stretching. We also have a lot of stretching on the ears. So the couple of ways we can fix this. First, let's do the ears. Uh, with ears, since they're such a, you know, even though these are very simple, since they're kind of a separate portion of the mesh that is very tight, it's really hard to get that to flatten out without distort without major distortion while also being within the same island. So what we're going to do, we're just going to actually cut off the ears and then also set a seam right along the top inside just through here. And we'll go right about to the center point. Or actually, you know what, let's do it along the bottom side. That way less stretch or a smaller portion of the seam will be visible in most shots. So we'll do the same thing here. You know, you always want to try and place your seams where they're least likely to be visible because even though we do our best to make good clean textures and without seams, you know, generally, unless you really spend a lot of time, you will have some seams. And so the more, the more, or 
the less noticeable you can make them, the, the better. So there, once we unwrap, then we have our ears separate, and you can see we then get very nice, uh, clean UVs on those. So now we just need to fix the feet. And you'll notice if we look at the UVs, uh, really they're kind of pinched all the way around. So what we need to do is uh, give it a little bit of re relaxing in these areas. So here at the base of the foot, I'm basically going to mimic a portion of the seam or, or sorry, at the base of the leg, but I'm going to mimic the portion of the seams at the feet. So let's just select these. I'm not going to go all the way around, but we'll just go part way. And you know, I'm going to go ahead and switch into edge mode just because it's easier and faster to select. There we are. We'll go this way one more, and then this one here. And we'll control E, mark that seam. And let's go ahead and just compare that. So we'll hit U and unwrap. And immediately we can see that those are much better. Now we are getting some uh, overlapping here, so we'll want to fix that. But let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other one, and then we can kind of see where we're at and adjust accordingly. So I'll select these on both sides. And here, Control E, Mark Seam, select everything, U, and Unwrap. And you can see immediately they improved some more. They're not great yet, but definitely improving. I'm going to go ahead and extend the seams at the bottom of the feet just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more room to relax. So you can see that immediately improved that just a bit. We don't care too much about the bottom of the feet as far as stretching goes. Uh, you know, it's not really going to be seen a whole lot. But we still want to make sure that uh, they're they're pretty good. So as long as there's not crazy stretching, it's okay if there's a little bit less resolution there. Now I want to try something uh, with the UVs now, and that is by using smart unwrap or smart. Um, I think it's called smart unwrapping UVs. Uh, just, oh, live unwrap. And the way live unwrap works is by working in the UV editor here. If we just go in and pin vertices by selecting them and hitting P, and maybe select this one, hit P. You just have to have at least two, then you can grab it, and it will basically try and wrap around those. So if we grab some of these kind of central points on the legs, maybe say these here, and pin those as well, we can then select one of the other pins and use that as basically a pivot point to then pull out a section of the UV to so then fix those areas that are overlapping. Now you'll notice that it basically skews everything else that's not pinched and so you have to use this quite carefully and in this case it's really probably not going to work very well so what I would like to do instead is try and find another way with which we can get these to not come out so far and one of the ways that we can probably do that is for one extending these seams here a little further so we'll mark those seams so that will help just a little bit I'm also going to lessen uh, this unwrap. I'm just going to bring these up three less edges. So I'll control E, clear those seams, and that will make this section splay out a little less. And at the same time, I'm also going to relax the, the muzzle a little bit by adding a seam right here in the center. Even though that's not a very opportune place to put the seam, it's one that's it's quite easy to fix, uh, you know, and it's also one that really, particularly with this, his very large uh, mouth here, that will really help relax that portion. And we want to continue trying to uh, relax some other portions of this. Something that you can think about is try and imagine the contours of the mesh and how they're going to best unwrap. So in this case, you know, with the tail here, as it slopes down here, it's going to be a lot harder for this to really flatten out. So something that we can do is we could go ahead and add more seams around the tail and such, or else just add a seam out like this. So maybe I'll just add a seam something here, because that will basically act as, think of it like a pleat in fabric, such that this area can go that way, this area can go that way, and really help kind of relax the whole thing a bit more. So we'll unwrap that, and you can immediately see that definitely helped, and the back actually looks really good now. Uh, so we still just need to work on the front and the um, the the head and such, or the, the legs. So on the legs, um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is it's getting a little difficult to get this to unwrap completely cleanly. So one thing is let's go ahead and, so that we can avoid some of the overlapping in here, 
Let's adjust the placement of these seams a bit. So I'm going to select these. I'm going to clear this seam. And instead, I'm going to place the seam right around here. And then I want to deselect any of these others in here. So I'll deselect that, deselect that. Control E, mark that seam. So now these are coming to the same point. Uh, we want to actually select these, deselect that edge. So clear those. So now I'll select it, hit U and unwrap. And you can see that immediately solved some of that overlapping in there. And we could probably, uh, we want to get rid of this overlap in there as well. And the way that we could do that, just have to think about this for a moment. Let's see what happens if we get rid of this seam. Let's just see what happens. Immediately that starts to work a little better. So what we could do is we could place the seams a little bit differently. I'm going to try this. Let's position the seams right in here. Control E, mark that seam. We'll unwrap that. Now currently, this is basically just an interior seam, so it's not going to do a whole lot. So let's bring it up a bit more. I want that to unwrap there. We're going to remove this front portion of the seam. We're going to clear that. We're going to add the seam back in right here. Control E, mark that seam. We'll clear this. And, oh, that didn't really work too well. Okay, we're going to get rid of this. So you can see how there's really, with particularly with a model that you don't necessarily work with a whole lot, you know, in the case of this hippo, there's, there's some things that you just kind of have to work with and tweak until it starts to work better. Um, with something like a human head, something that I've unwrapped a lot, you know, there's generally not a lot of guessing involved. But with, in this case, since this is a model that, you know, I don't, I definitely don't model hippos every day. It's something that I've got to work with a little bit more to see exactly how I want it to work. And I think what I might tr do is I would like to relax this a little bit. I want to keep this section here along the top completely solid. You know, I really like that because that's where there's going to be a lot of focus uh, in most of our renders. And so we want to have as few seams there as possible. So currently, basically this, the side folds up, the, this folds up. But one of the areas that we don't really have a lot of play is this right in here. So what I'm going to try, we're going to try a couple things and one thing you can do by the way is if you go into unwrap if you then enable or excuse me under mesh options if you enable live unwrap any time that you go in and just say add a seam so say mark seam well or maybe not I thought that it would do it well never mind um, it's supposed to work by when, as you set seams and unwrap, then it just works. But seemingly it does not work at the moment, or else I'm just using it wrong. But setting that aside. All right, for the sake of time, what we're going to do is we're just going to separate the legs. You know, ideally, we like to have the legs and such fully connected. It just it makes it a lot easier to avoid some of the seams. But in this case, and frankly, in most cases, it can be really hard to get the legs to unwrap cleanly without getting the distortion just like we're seeing right now and the overlap. And the overlap is the one big thing that we really can't have. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and remove the legs and I think that will be just fine. You know, that's actually pretty common practice. And if we look at this now, we get a much more even unwrap. But what we could do now is go in and use the new UV sculpt tools. And I want to just uh, scale up these areas just a little bit. So I'm going to go into UVs, UV Sculpt, which then gives me a few more tools right in here. Uh, I've got UV Sculpt. Here we are. Go down a little bit. And what I want to do, we should have brush options. 
Uh, yes, so we have brush options right here. So either grab, relax, or pinch. So I'm going to go into relax, and I'm just going to relax some of these areas just a little bit. Or actually, I'm not really liking that too much. Let's go into uh, grab or pinch. And what pinch can do is if we hold down control, we can actually expand some of these areas to get slightly more resolution on here. But I also want to disable lock borders. This way, the edges can actually expand through here. And we'll just uh, reverse pinch these up, which just gives us a bit more resolution in there. And we'll do a bit more right in here. So you'll notice it works quite smoothly, and it really doesn't change the overall layout of our UVs. It just gives us a little bit more room to kind of tweak it like we'd like. And then it's probably a good idea after you do this to also go back in and relax portions of this so that we don't you know, make sure that we're not changing things too much. So I'm going to go back into relax and then just uh, let's uh, bring the strength way down and then we'll just kind of relax some of these sections, make sure that we haven't caused any weird distortion or anything like that. And you can see that there is a little bit of distortion here and there. So I will go and just subtly relax it. We don't want these ja or um, jaggedy edges on the squares. All the squares should be relatively straight edged. And so if you have some that are more stretched, then it might be a good idea to do a little bit of the, the relaxing to make sure that you're not causing problems. And this is one in particular that is not as good. And one cool thing, oh, that's the grab. I want the relax. There we go. So you don't, you know, you don't necessarily have to do this all that much, but doing it can definitely improve some things. And in this case, you know, I've definitely I've messed this up just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and re-unwrap it just to solve those problems, and then I'm going to go back in and pinch it just a little bit. You know, in that case, I really just, I overdid it in some areas, and so I'm going to go back in and just kind of basically, you know, essentially learn from my mistakes and do it again just real quickly r r without too much energy. And I think that will just about work. Uh, one thing we might do is we're getting some stretching because right here, basically, we're not able to relax this portion as much. So I'm going to give it a little bit more ability to relax by adding in just two seams, about like this. I'm going to mark those seams, and then I'm also going to bring this seam back another edge. So you unwrap. There we go. So that gives us a much more even uh, result in here and I think that will probably do it okay so that's close enough for what we're doing today so what I want to do now is to go in and bake the uh, the normals so if you're not familiar with baking the normals so if you're not familiar with baking you can access it from the render properties and you can bake any number of things everything from your full render including all lighting textures etc you can bake just your textures uh, and again, any number of things. The only thing that it requires in this case that we want to bake the normal maps is it requires an image to be assigned to the UVs. So this image in this case is our UV pan or our UV test grid right here. And so this will work just fine. Now on our UVs, you know, generally when you do this, you want to make sure that things are as optimized as possible. So generally, we, you know, we might go ahead and reorganize this a little bit to try and make use of all this empty space. For this case, since we're just baking this for the time being, I'm not going to worry about that. You know, we could definitely optimize that a little bit more, but this will be quite suitable for what we're doing today. So we're baking the normal map such that we can acquire the high resolution detail from our sculpture to then bake it onto our retopologized mesh.
To do this, we just need to change the bake mode over to normals and we're gonna choose selected active. If we just bake the existing model, uh, this one right here, our low resolution, if we just save this and then click bake, it won't really do a whole lot. We could just basically get a plain blue. So this means that we're not pulling in any of this high resolution detail. So what we need to do is enable selected to active. We'll then select the high resolution mesh followed by holding down shift and selecting the low resolution such that the low resolution is our primary selection. And then we'll go ahead and click bake again. Now what this will do is that will bake out the level of the multi-res that we have set as our render resolution, which in this case is our full, full res. Um, this may take just a little bit. And so I'm gonna pause recording while it's going, but you'll see the result here in just a moment. Okay, here we are. So we have some immediate problems, as you can see, namely all the facets in here. And this is because we have not set our low resolution mesh to, to shade smooth. So let's go ahead and set our shading to smooth. And then if we bake this again, it will work much nicer. So we'll go ahead and click bake. And there we have it, a very nicely baked normal map here, which just to visualize this a little bit better, let's go ahead and select our low res. We're going to hit numpad slash to hide everything else. And then you can see it applied here. There's no weird spots or anything. Uh, well, maybe a couple of weird spots right in here but they shouldn't cause any problems necessarily, or they might, but they're in spots where it looks like they're in wrinkles anyway, and so it should be just fine. So what I wanna to do to really visualize this, let's leave local mode. We're going to hide our high resolution, and then we're gonna hit Shift A, we're going to add in a lamp and a hemi lamp, and this is just a, basically a directional lamp in kind of a hemispherical shape. So it gives us a lot of just kind of even lighting. And in order to visualize the normal map applied to this, we're just going to go over to the materials. We're gonna add a material. Then we'll promptly go over to the textures, add a texture. And we're gonna change the texture type over to image and load in our untitled image here, which let's go ahead and name this as hippo underscore normal. There we go. And we should go ahead and save this as well. So I'll just save as image. I'll create a new textures directory inside our working file or working directory. And then we can call this hippo underscore normal and save it as soon as it saves out and take just a moment there we go okay we need to change the coordinates then on our texture here to be uv such that it uses the uv coordinates and then we want to disable the color option and enable the geometry normal option what this will do is set it to be a bump map but this is actually a normal map. So let's do one thing first and let's actually enable this in the viewport. To see it in the viewport, we're gonna disable textured solid and change the shading type over to GLSL. So now if we hit Alt Z or switch into texture shading, it will then show the bump map applied to our model. Now, this looks kind of weird. You know, some parts like around the eye look kind of all right, but it looks weird because currently it's set as a bump map, not as a normal map. And a normal map actually has directional uh, lighting in it for the vectors here. And so you get actual much better depth, whereas a bump map is just, you know, up and down. So what we need to do is we need to tell Blender that this, this is a normal map. So we'll go to image sampling, just enable normal map, and promptly it looks a thousand times better and actually looks really good. So one last thing that we can do, oh, actually, nope, that is the last thing. Uh, you can adjust the strength of the normal map here, making it lighter or stronger. In this case, uh, we'll just leave it at one. And there we have it. So here is our normal mapped hippo. It looks quite good overall, I think. And this normal map could then be you know, mixed with your textures. And if you actually even added in, say, a subdivision surface modifier to this, you'd get even better detail just because it'd be a little bit more rounded. You can see a couple areas here where it then gets mixed up. If you, un if you don't subdivide the UVs, that will fix those problems. And then you get a very nice little low resolution, but highly detailed hippo character. Now, you know, there's lots of other things we could do with this. We could take this model and do a high frequency sculpt pass and then apply those to the normal map as well. Uh, 
any number of things we could do, but I think this is a very good stopping point for this little mini series. So, you know, just in conclusion, in this little series, you have learned how to create a base mesh for sculpting. You've then learned how to sculpt on a lot of those details, followed by sculpting in some additional details and retopologizing the entire mesh using a variety of tools, including the really uh, astounding B surfaces tool, which is just awesome. Props to the developer on that. Uh, and then lastly, learn how to UV unwrap and bake out our normal map. So all in all, I think it's been a successful little series. I hope that you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Hopefully, uh, we can see some hippos and other animals and such submitted to the Blender Gallery. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.